This is a short, quick lesson to show you how to circle your character as they're walking and use a simple prop that anyone can make. It consists of four boxes. It can consist of many more, and you can put the boxes anywhere along that line you want. The main box is, is here. It's called Keep the Camera on Me, the long box, and then the three positional boxes. This is the long shot. This is a mid shot. And this is a close-up. So, and each one of them is appropriately named. I'm going to turn it off temporarily. I've got to take Chuck and move him down just for demo purposes uh, where he's going to walk. And it doesn't matter where it is because the prop is an accessory on the character or it can be linked. And wherever he goes, it goes. So if I say move, walk forward, and I click down the line here, I need enough to fill up 1,800 frames for the demo. So I'm going to come out here and click down here and let Chuck walk down to that point. He's just about there. We're at frame 1,200 now, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I hit stop. Come to the prop. Turn it back on. I'm going to turn on, there's a command for it, it's right there, it's perform 360 30 second spin. I turn that off, I'm going to come to the prop and I'm going to come to the front of it and then you can zoom in as close as you want. This camera is going to be starting at the far point here. The distant camera It's going to move into here and then it's going to move in for the close up. Now, the close up sitting up above it just a little bit so that we can catch a little bit more of him. Each one of these boxes can be moved up. Let's say if we want a close-up um, of the character itself, just move the last box up a little bit if you want to see their face. So it doesn't matter where these three boxes are, you just don't merge the prop. And we're going to take our camera and we're going to have it link here. I have it link to what? Well, first of all, I'm going to start off with the long shot. So all I've got to do is click here, and then there is a sub node here. Choose that and say long shot position. And there it is. Now, if you want to rotate from there, you can with a long shot. You just bring it down, and this is your long shot. Now, this angle is going to play each time you move it so it's going to be a straight on shot like that. You can also back the camera up if you want to start from here because this is going to be a complete dummy you're not even going to be able to see it in the scene. In fact I could just turn it off right now and you could see the angle where the camera is going to be. I'm going to turn it on for this first run anyway. So my camera is linked up to the long shot. Choose the prop and hit the letter I or attach to pick parent and choose Chuck over here. If you choose him here you might have to adjust it. If you just choose him here it'll choose his root node. Okay. Choose his bone root node right here automatically and that's where it should go. So the camera's there now. All I've got to do is uh, right click on the tool and I say perform. Now performs are also there for Chuck because it's an accessory. Here's the command 360 30 second spin and just play it. And as it plays it follows Chuck all the way down the scene. It doesn't matter where he's going. It's going to follow him. I'm just going to let that play out because I'll show you how you adjust the uh, camera shots once it's gone down. 0, 179, 358, 0. That's what gives you a complete 360 uh, prop inside of iClone. So here we go. Keep the camera on me. I've got it here. It's finished its rendering. Where do I want it to be on the last shot? Well, I want it to be on the I'm ready for my close-up. So take the camera, come back, and back the camera up just a little bit. And we'll give it a little bit of room so it'll be closer on the character. And then you can say, pick the parent. I'm ready. Choose your node. And I'm ready. 
and say position. And there you go. Now that's the close-up shot you'll get. You can also adjust that box at that point, but I would adjust it up away from the camera. I wouldn't adjust it here because you'll get a transform from frame 1 to whatever frame you're currently in, 1472 in this case. So you can adjust that up if that's not the camera shot you want for a close-up. You can move it backwards, you can move it forward. These are things you can do as you go along the timeline, but I'm going to leave it there for now. That's the final one, and I hit stop. Now, if I want that camera shot for I'm ready to be on his face, just move your box up here. It will find it. The camera already knows what it wants to find, so there it is. We go down here, and it'll stay on this long shot until you change it. So about midway, I'm going to change it to a mid shot. So I come back to the camera, pick parent, choose the mid shot. Choose the sub node, position, and say OK. And that's your mid level shot. If you wanted a fire, like I said, you just raise the box up at frame one. Here we go. Keep the camera on me. We can just turn it off. So let me adjust the camera. There's my first camera shot. Camera's linked. This is ready. And Chuck's walking. Here we go. Still on the long shot. About midway, it'll switch to the middle shot. And then it'll get to the close up. And there it is. There's your face shot. Final shot. And then it's finished. And if in the last frame you want it to change to a long shot or a mid shot to pull back, just do that. Change your, your camera connection again. It says I'm ready for my close up. Pick the parent. Open this up again. And choose the mid shot. And at here, you once again choose the sub node. Choose, it doesn't matter this or this, say position and pull back and it'll give you mid shot. And with that mid shot, you can also bring it up by hitting W or actually in this case you can't because you can't see it. It's behind your view screen. You just bring it up and it can also move based on transforms for the previous mid shot. Like I said, you can put it anywhere you want. So it currently it's sitting on the ground as this is moving down the timeline, transposing itself. Then that mid box is slowly moving up. You notice you see more now than you did before and it's continually moving up to give you a different angle. So if you want it at a certain angle, you've got to set it on the timeline. If you want to stay there, you've got to hold it. And then at the end, there's your close-up, and then it's going to snap back to the midpoint away from the character. It's a very simple accessory, very simple prop, depending on how you look at it. And you can set all these to dummies if you want, and they all work. Now that is a prop anyone can make. It's just four boxes, and it's got a single command on it. That command was done very simply by collecting all the transforms into a single command. Now I'm, this is the first camera. I'm going to create a new camera and this is my second option. So I'm going to take this camera and work with it, camera zero, and we're going to turn this completely off. We don't need it. And I'm going to take camera zero parent and I want it to go on my camera pan tool which is just a prop it doesn't matter where it goes and it can also be linked as an accessory or attached as an accessory camera pan tool hit sub node camera path which is what the pan tool does this is where I link it up and I say position it'll zoom right in on I'm just gonna leave it where it's at 
and say, okay. I don't care where the position is. It's just going to continually circle him. And then I take the camera pan tool, hit letter I, and you can attach it or you can link it. Pick parent again, Chuck. I'm just going to link it because the other is already attached. But both can be attached. Now, I play real time. The camera is is going to follow this tool, which has already got a preset animation. If I open the timeline, it's already got preset animation on it. Choose here, and it's got an animation. And this is a uh, pan camera. Made this tool back in iPhone 4, I believe. But you can loop this motion and it just continue to roll. And I've left it on so you can see the circle. If I go in here to materials, I'll make it more visible so you can see it. I've actually dropped the opacity down on it so it won't interfere with the scenes. And there it is. This little circle right here is the pan tool. Basically the same as this, only with one position. And I just press play. As I go, or as the character goes down the timeline, walking to its destination, it stays with him because it's linked to the root node or attached to the root node, and it continues to go around. And at any point in that timeline, if I want to move in closer, I take the character, I roll forward once, roll it back. That adds a keyframe here. From this point to where the, where it is now, it will add a keyframe and won't be moving in and out. And then I press play and then move in closer. And it's almost the same as switching cameras. And you can put it anywhere you want, position your camera. This is the other camera that was in the scene. And press play. And then it'll circle close. That's the end of 1800 frames. Of course, you can go on the timeline for this camera pan tool and you can change it where it ends exactly at a break just by speeding it up or slowing it down. Right there. And that'll put you in front of it, which is where the camera starts. So, one more time, it'll go through. It's still on the camera pan tool. The camera pan tool is linked to the root node. The other tool is attached to the root node. Doesn't matter which way you go. This one will switch closer, uh, pretty close to the end. And there it goes. That's it. Those are two tools. Very simple to make. The Keep the camera on me tool is very simple. It's up here. It's got animation built in. These were the original transform keys. 0, 179. There's two keys here, 358 and 0. And that's what gives me this 360 spin. Freaky out.